Too many people spend money they don't have to buy the things they don't want to impress the people they don't like. Someone famous said that. Life is complex and it's filled with so many material things, so much stuff that it gets harder and harder to appreciate the really important things in life. But when you live with less and cherish the things you most need, nothing gets unnoticed and everything serves a purpose. Owning less is a secret of life and not an easy task because we live in a digital age where we're bombarded with ads all the damn time. With practice and mindfulness, we can build a habit of it and learn the importance of owning less things for a beautiful and filled life. It's not the number of things you own, but rather owning the right things. Today's video is all about how less is more, or as the German industrial designer Dieter Rams puts it, less but better, which is essentially having timeless designs with higher quality material. This video will hopefully shed some light on a new lifestyle and help you shape your habits for a fuller, stress-free life. These are my versions of the tip, but you can always come up with your own and add to it. These minimalism tips are helpful at every stage of life, no matter if you're 20 or 55. The first step being following less accounts for more valued relationships. What I'm saying is that we don't need to follow a thousand people on Instagram because chances are we won't be able to go through all of them every time we're using the app anyways. I'm talking about limiting the number of people you follow because then you'll be able to have more meaningful interactions and you'll be able to scroll through your feed and cover all of the people that you follow. I personally have like different Instagram accounts for the type of accounts that I follow. One is for my friends and family, the others for work related design companies, and then a third one for entrepreneur mindset and all of that. It's not necessarily less is more, but then in this case, I follow less people on each of my page and it becomes easy for me to digest my feed and to see what's going on in the people's life that I'm following. Because following a ton of pages and not being able to catch up with each post doesn't make sense to me. The whole strategy is to declutter the type of people or the type of accounts that you follow so you can have meaningful interactions with friends and family and be in touch with everyone. That's my concept of having less people but valuing all of them. The second one is having less stuff which means more space. The space that we surround ourselves impact our lives more than we realize. It could greatly affect our mood and how we feel. The art of decluttering and letting go of things that don't serve us anymore allows us to have more space to enjoy. Less spending equals more money. I read this in some article and it just stuck with me that opportunity and experiences always trumps material possessions. Focus on experiences over things and watch your life become fuller and better. Now there's a difference between cheap and being frugal. Being cheap is like uh, washing aluminum foil to reuse it, or maybe like eating out at a low quality restaurant. But being frugal is totally different. It means living a life that is not wasteful and having clarity between your wants and your needs. I get that we want the latest gadgets and we want that fully loaded car, but if we have bills to pay, then that needs to be done first. Pay off the debt and invest the money you have now so that your wealth can grow over time. Buying the stuff we don't need will only make us guilty after the shopping therapy rush subsides. The value of things loses its worth over time, but the feeling of guilt and debt are here to stay. We tend to feel more positive when we are saving money instead of spending it. It leads to a real sense of security and preparation for future circumstances. I did some reflection to see what triggers me to buy stuff and I realized that every time I'm watching a product review on YouTube, I normally end up on Amazon buying stuff. So now, I intentionally only watch product reviews when I really have to buy something, not just when I'm killing time on YouTube. Identifying the habit patterns helps us in disrupting it and building new ones. Sometimes when we click on that ad somewhere on Instagram or on some website, we're being tracked wherever we are on the internet and whether we open Amazon or Google or whatever, we're, that thing keeps popping up and it's just difficult to not make that purchase but that's the world we live in and it's important to be aware of those things and not indulge or do some impulsive buying. And let me know how that goes for you. Less clothes means more closet space. Having a minimalist wardrobe can truly change your life. You will see a shift in overall mental clarity and you will also spend less time shopping and deciding what to wear. Making that mental shift and deciding to have a minimalist wardrobe will help you immensely and will impact you in other areas of your life. Like what I did, I used to spend a ton of time filtering through clothes and deciding what to wear each morning. And I got rid of a ton of clothes that I wasn't wearing. I was just like taking up space, a bunch of shirts, t-shirts, jeans, uh, old clothes, stuff that didn't fit me anymore, loose clothes and whatnot. So I 
gathered all of it and I got rid of it and now I have like clean stacks in my wardrobe which is like really calming to see and every morning it just takes me like five minutes to get ready because you don't necessarily have to have like a full black clothes attire like a minimalist wardrobe you can just have like fewer things nice quality stuff that you wear most of the times. What my wife does is every time she's buying some new clothes, then she gives her old clothes away for charity. But once you start uh, doing that and putting it into practice, you will realize how beneficial it is and it just doesn't make sense to have a full cluttered wardrobe. It'll also help you focus on investing in higher quality pieces that will truly last you for your years to come. Higher quality pieces tend to be designed to fit and feel better on the body, which will truly be enjoyable and make you feel good. You won't have to worry about having pieces that collect dust in your closet and it'll become clear to you what items are essential and what are not. It'll be very easy to give them away if you choose to. There's an overall sense of unity and no more chaos in trying to find the outfits that you want to wear. And the side effect of this is that you save more money because you buy less stuff. The next point is having less of social media so you can have more of reading time. It's important to limit our time on social media so we can enhance our knowledge and have more information available to make better decisions. At night, if you find yourself laying in bed scrolling through social media feeds, consider downloading the Kindle app or leave a book by your nightstand to read instead. Less planning and more doing. Every time I'm stuck to make a decision, I remind myself of the ancient fable about the fox and the cat. In the story, the two animals discuss how many ways they have to escape their hunters. The fox boasts of having so many. The cat, however, admits to having only one. When the hunters finally arrived, the cat quickly climbs a tree and is safe. The fox, on the other hand, uh, thinks about all the ways that he knows to escape the situation. But he fails to decide which one would be the best for him and he gets caught by the hunters. To me, the story perfectly illustrates the analysis paralysis phenomena, which is the inability to act or decide due to overthinking about a particular thing. Paralysis by analysis is when you're stuck planning everything and action is never taken. A person who's going through analysis paralysis gets so lost in the process of analyzing each and every situation and details that they fail to take the decision and are unable to act on it. Just like the fox in the old fable. Although planning is important to do our work effectively, but don't overdo it and just get it done sometimes. Spend less time planning so far ahead and focus on the things you can accomplish in the short term. This is something I personally struggle with sometimes, like when you're too busy, stuck in the planning mode and then you're strategizing everything Thing and you fail to take action. So it's important to have that vision and some goal or some direction, but it's also important to not be stuck in analysis paralysis. Less junk food equals more healthy food. Although this could be easier said than done, but studies show that serving food to yourself actually promotes you to eat healthier. Preparing food from home will save you money and allow you to have more control over what you put in your body. Try decluttering your kitchen and get rid of all of the junk items that you end up snacking every time you're bored. Because when you have better choices, you make better choices. So set your environment to your advantage. Less diets equals more healthy living. Trendy diets are full of false promises that send us the message that we can lose weight fast. Although you may lose weight in the short term, but it's usually the people who restrict themselves from eating and are on a very strict diet. But as time goes, uh, you quickly regain the lost weight back again because you can't really be that strict your entire time or you can't be that disciplined the entire time. So you normally end up regaining the lost weight. Uh, which is not a very healthy practice to follow. Instead of trying a new diet, simply focus on a healthier lifestyle. Add fruits and vegetables to your diet. When you're out shopping for groceries, try to buy more fruits and vegetables and just like healthier stuff that will make you feel good and keep you away from the junk food. That's a better way to having a healthier lifestyle instead of on a strict crash course diet which will help you lose weight quickly. When you focus less on dieting and more on healthy living, you will see positive long-term results instead of a quick fix. Less doubting equals more believing. One of the most important things in life is to learn how to start believing in yourself. Imagine what you could accomplish if you just pushed those negative self-doubts aside and went on for what you really wanted with full confidence. Practice self-affirmations each day to give yourself a little confidence boost. Oftentimes as days goes by, we tend to fill up ourselves with some negativities due to the people around us or some situations and circumstances that we go through and we tend to forget that how good we are how unique we are what are the, our special attributes and how much loved we are in this world so it's important to have affirmations each day 
to give yourself a little confidence boost and remind yourself of how special you are and the things that you're good at. When we remind ourselves regularly of the things that we're good at, we have less of self-doubts and we focus more on the positive things, which is a nice state of mind to have. Less arrogance equals more gratitude. Take a little bit of time each morning or throughout the day to write down some of the things you are grateful for. Your friends, your family, the new contract that you got or the delicious food that you had for lunch or dinner, the love that you have in your life, your children, there's just endless amount of things to be grateful for. By being grateful for all of these things, we are less arrogant and less boastful about our position or our situation in life and more thankful and helpful to the people around us. Experts say that the act of keeping a gratitude journal will help you see life in a more positive manner and avoid focusing on the negative situations. Less complaining equals more encouraging. Many things to complain about life, but complaining doesn't fix the problem. Instead, focus on things that you can fix and what you can do to change. Sometimes we feel like uh, we need to control everything in life. And when things don't go our way, we complain a lot. When we replace the complaining with encouragement, we start the process of positive reinforcement and accept the things that are not within our control. Less talking equals more listening. I read the book once called uh, How to Influence People by Dale Carnegie and in one of the points he talked about how if you listen to people, no matter how popular or how famous, even if they're the president of the United States, if you listen to them and ask uh, their story about their family and just things in general, people love talking about themselves. And listening is one of the greatest gifts that we can give to someone else. When we listen to people with our full attention and full focus, they feel heard and they feel important. And in most cases, we don't even have to ask for what we're looking for. We normally get it from them anyways, without even trying. That was one of the points that was there in the book. Often we feel like we need to share our stories or give advice and don't really take into consideration that sometimes the other person just wants to be heard. Next time you're in this situation, take a moment to simply engage by listening to the other person who will really appreciate the chance to share. The concept of less is more is based on the values of simplicity. And by having less, you can actually create a life of more. You can still feel secure and happy with less because you're gaining so much more value in your life. What are the things that you would like to have less of? Do you crave more time, energy, and love? 